happy Sunday. <laughs> um, with me is Laura Bradford. Hi. And um, Laura, I don't know if I said this to you, but if you at the top there, I think it says private on one side and comments. If you click on where it says comments, you'll be able to see the individual comments, but I can also pull them up just like this. Got it. Okay. So, um, Mr. Francie. Hey, Mr. Francie. So Mr. Francie is an Australian YouTuber who's been starting to read a lot of cozies. And, oh, um, outstanding. Hi, Mr. Yeah. Francie, Re Francie Reads. <laughs> Hey, Stephanie. Stephanie's another amazing YouTuber. She reads everything across the board. She might be my twin from, you know, but we're not sure. We haven't investigated, but she might be. Hi. Hey, Hannah. It's good to see you. Hannah just started a, a YouTube channel and oh, she nice. reads a lot of cozies and she is like a speed demon reader. There we go. We love that. <laughs> Hey, Storm. Storm says, hi, everyone. Sitting in a Chinese restaurant eating, but wasn't going to miss this. Got it on real life. Well, I'm gotcha. honored. <laughs> well, thank you. That's so nice that you still um, joined in. Storm has a great channel as well. Storm reads. Hi, Mel. Mel's channel's not meant to, but it reminds me of ALF every time I see it. Okay. Remember, remember the TV show ALF? Absolutely. Where the the planet was Mel Mac, but she said, oh, no, it's just like part of her first and last name. Oh, my gosh. Uh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Francie said there was no way I was missing this considering your works got me started on cozies. Very nice. That's awesome, Mr. That Francie. Awesome. So um, I'm going to turn it over to Laura and let her talk about all of her series, but we really want to talk about her brand new one, which Ooh. is the Friend for Hire. But before I go too much, I'm going to turn it over to the expert. Well, hi. Thank you for having me. And thank you to everybody who's here. Um, yeah, this new series, I'm excited about it. The Friend for Higher Mysteries. Um, the idea actually kind of came to me during the very early part of the pandemic when we're kind of stuck inside. Yeah. And my youngest daughter was talking about a coworker who moved to New York from Texas. And I thought, I was like, wow, that would be very overwhelming. I think as a 24 year old already out of college, it's hard to meet people. Um, and she told me that they have like almost like dating apps, except for friends, and you can make friends that way. So that kind of churned around in my head. And, and as, a, as a writer often does, you kind of take that and then you kind of start turning it and tweaking it. And next thing I know, I had this idea of a friend for hire. You know, so many people have their friends all online. And then when they, they need to go somewhere or do something and bring someone with them, it kind of presents a problem. So I thought, why not be a friend for hire? And um, the characters just started coming to me. And Dottie, I mean, I love to write elderly characters. And uh, Dottie was fun. And I thought, why not make her be a cozy mystery lover who, you know, has dying to get out there and solve a real crime. And I thought it was kind of fun that my sleuth really didn't want to. That's not her <laughs> thing. She really wants the cops to take care of it. But then here she's got this elderly woman pushing her from the sidelines saying, come on, let's do this. And, you know, eventually she kind of gets into it. But yeah, I'm uh, I'm loving writing this. Um, book two, A Perilous Pal, comes out in July. So if you liked the first book, then really, you know, maybe consider pre-ordering that second one so the publisher knows that people are actually excited about it. So, yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> it was, oh, gosh, I can't even say. I, I think um, I read it in December, and it was one of my favorite reads. And then somebody else who... Um, She's in California, so this is a pretty early time for her, but she will might be on or she will definitely watch it later. So she read it in December, and this was one of her favorite reads of the entire year Ooh. in the last month of the year. Oh, well, so, that's and nice. She only reads cozy mysteries. So that's a pretty big badge of honor. Wow, that um, no, that's a huge badge of honor. I love it. To hear it when really, really yeah. It really is. Uh, oh. Stephanie said, I absolutely loved Plus One Thank for Murder. I think we're all going to try to uh, buddy read it again when the second one comes out. Good. Um, because there were so many of us that loved it. Good. We were so excited about it. That I makes bet. me happy. Yeah. And I'm seeing I'm seeing people saying Storm Reed said that she really enjoyed it. And Buggy Reads loved it. And yeah, that's, um, it's exciting. It's fun. It's fun you know, coming up with the, the side characters too. I really had a good time creating Stephanie and Dottie and Big Max and all the people that are going to make up her world. 
I and, love Big Max. Yeah, we'll learn more about that. We'll learn more about Emma as the book progresses. Um, you get a little bit more insight into her in book two and, and hopefully a book three and four. So it's yes. fun. It's fun. And I think one of the, to me, I'm a very character driven reader. So side characters are almost as important as anything else to me because yep. I have to have those in order to stay engaged in the series. I, interesting. Um, I agree. I agree. And I think the side characters tell you a lot about the main character. Absolutely. You know, so. Yeah. Um, and I, I really loved it. And, you know, some people were talking, we were talking about how like uh, Emma was a reluctant sleuth, right? you know, and she kind of had to be pushed into it by some of the others. And I'm like, well, that's pretty realistic. A lot of times we don't see that, right. but like, I'm a scaredy cat. So I would, be, I'd be like, um, that's what the police are for. Yep. <laughs> like, I wouldn't be... go near that. And I would have to, I would take a lot of pushing and a lot of shoving from people to even right. get involved even a little. So. Yeah. The idea of interviewing a potential murderer, you don't even know if they are, they just might be <laughs> not my cup of tea. <laughs> like, yeah. Really fun Aww. to read about, but yeah, not wanting yeah. to. Yeah. Hannah said she loved it. Yes, Stephanie, I can't wait for book two either. You said June or July? July, July 5th. Okay. So when the cover's Ooh. already out there floating around, I think it's on the various vendor sites and it's really cute. So um, the dog gets a big, you know, a big, she, uh, right on the cover, Scout. I love Scout. Yeah. So, yeah. Then I always think it's great when they can, when we include animals in our cozies. I, I love that. Yeah. So I just, I think that says, uh, so, you know, so I've read some reviews where like, they don't feel like they know Emma very well. It's like, I think you do know Emma a little bit from all of the people around her. She has this dog, she has these people and these people are kind of like her community. And that, I think that says a lot about her, but we will learn more. I like to, I like people to get to know the characters a little over time, kind of like you do with a real person. You know, we're not going to just like, hey, here's I am right from the start. You, you start to learn little things about them. So. Yeah. yeah. And I think that like what you said, you, you know, by learning and knowing the people around them, because it, it's kind of like that old saying, ask me who my friends are and I'll tell you who you are. Yeah, absolutely. You know? So absolutely. and I think that's a that's a definitely a nod toward that. Storm said, I really enjoyed plus one for murder, but then I liked everything I've read of yours. We were oh, talking about that the other day. And we have a we have a killing time with Cozy's Discord. Our name okay. of our group, it's a Cozy Mystery Discord, but we it's called Killing Time with Cozy's because we thought it kind of sounded like a book title. Yeah, anyway. it does. <laughs> um, and a lot of us are always in there chatting about Cozy's. And we were talking about, like, for, for me, you're one of the authors that's my favorite writer. Just the oh, way that you write. Thank you. Um, Southern Sewing Circle. I know mm -hmm. I've said this to you before, but it's like my top, one of my top three favorite series of all time. I, have, I, I, if you told me that you're writing more, I think I'd like jump up and down, but let's, you know, um, so I know <laughs> they self publish something. It'd be so awesome. Um, and I, I loved the emergency dessert squad too. I was, I was bummed to see that one only. Yeah, early, me, too. Early. me too. But came at kind of came at a crazy time with the publishing house that that a lot going on with them yeah. at that time. So it didn't help. But maybe one day I'll revisit them. And the yeah. sewing circle, uh, I have a, a, a possible way to bring one of those characters back. But we have to wait and see if the publisher likes the idea. So, yeah, we'll see. You know, if I was, like, thinking in my head, like, I, I mean, I just love talking about cozies mm -hmm. because that's mainly what I read. And the reason I created my channel, a lot of people say, but honest to goodness was to talk about books with other people who wanted to talk about books. Cause I always make the joke. I've learned over the years that it's not socially polite or normal to when somebody that you don't know in the grocery store, like you're in line and they're just like, Hey, how are you? And they're like, let me tell you about this book I read. Apparently that's <laughs> not necessarily that you're supposed to do that. You're not supposed to. Well, I have friends and I have friends that read, but they right. don't necessarily read cozy mysteries. So I was really seeking that out. But um, I, I forgot where I was going with that. I don't know, but it'll come back to me. <laughs> that happens I, to me I, too. <laughs> it, it'll come. It'll come back to me why why I brought it up. Mm -hmm. Hey, Kay. Kay is my mother in law. It's good to oh, see you. Hi. <laughs> <laughs> 
Uh, Mel said a plus one for murder was the first book I read this year. Nice. That's nice. Awesome, Mel. I'm glad to hear that. Yeah. It's, um, Oh no, she said Stephanie's a great name. Of course. <laughs> yes. No, she was Stephanie. I actually really enjoyed her. I'll say that she's based a little bit on someone I know, which I don't usually do. Oh, but just a person who's so, so busy and so wrapped up in their work and they have crazy bosses and they don't ever really get to have a life of their own, you know, but they're still funny and, and it's fun creating her and you get to see that she's a fun character and that she really needs Emma to kind of help get her out of her, out of her normal daily existence. So we'll see a little bit more with Stephanie in book two also. So they're all coming back and Big Max comes back in style in book two. So yes, yeah. that's exciting. I didn't remember where I was going. Okay. <laughs> I was like, okay, I didn't remember my point. And that's why I started the channel, but I really have liked um, just supporting cozies because I don't think that they get anywhere the recognition that they should. Right. And so one of the things that I was thinking about doing over time is if, a, if an author has a series that they might continue as a self-published series because it mm -hmm. ended, right. I thought about doing like a newsletter or a series about where are they now, like right before they start up their new book that's coming out. And I thought, you know, that might be a cool way to keep like their character alive. Yeah. And then, so, um, that would be fun. cause I would definitely, I would definitely okay. want to know what Tori was up to. Sometimes I think about that, like what, yeah. what characters are up to. So yeah. that might be a fun. I fun did series. that actually in my newsletter last year. So Christmas of 2020, I did a Christmas card from Tori where she brought everybody up to speed on what all the different characters were doing. So that was, it was just like a little thing, but yeah. it was fun. And I loved visiting them because I wonder what they're doing. So yeah. it was so, yeah. that's so great. That's awesome. Yeah. I know. Yeah. Storm really loved Big Max. Oh, good. Good. Big I did Max too. was fun. I yeah. loved Big Max. I love Dottie. I think those two are my favorites. Oh, nice. So good. Yeah. I agree, Tiffany. I'm a very character-driven reader. If I don't like the side characters, I have a hard time connecting. Yeah. yeah. Or I have a hard time not necessarily connecting. Well, I mean, I do, but really staying engaged. Right. You know, um, right. you know, if the characters are just so-so, it's hard to, you know, want to invest right. in them yeah. <laughs> for me. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. He is a great character. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Character driven reader. The cover is so cute. Scout is adorable. I love animals and cozies. Me too. And I don't, I've never, I actually have never owned a dog, but there is a dog oh. that my daughter's friend has who's coincidentally named Scout. And it's one of those dogs that it's like, if I ever had a dog, that was the dog that I wanted. So I figured Aww. maybe I would, you know, kind of experiment with having one through a character. So, yeah. yeah. Oh, that's awesome. They're great companions. I love yeah. them. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I love Scout. Animal companions pack the personality add so much to cozies. They absolutely. Yeah, yeah. Absolutely. Hi, Cheryl. Um, I have one of your books out from the library right now. Yay. That's awesome, Cheryl. <laughs> Cheryl has a booktube channel. She's also, she's in Canada. So, um, okay. she's, ooh, she's cold thinking about it. Yeah. Yeah, the Southern Sewing Circle series is it's so good. You know, I still get emails about that series. I'd say once or twice a week from people asking me about those that series. And was was Pattern for Death really the last one? And but I just hope that what I proposed might. I don't know. We'll see. Fingers crossed. Fingers crossed. Yes, I yeah. I have my fingers crossed and toes to be yeah. honest because I love it. It was a fun, it was a fun series to write for sure. Stephanie said, cozies definitely don't get enough recognition. I've had a few friends try them and love them this year. And it's making so, I know whenever, whenever people get into cozies and then really take off, I'm like, oh, another one. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, you'd be amazed at how many people really don't know what cozies are at all. Right. You know, and then, um, you kind of start telling them, or I you, I usually say, do you like Hallmark kind of movies, mystery channel? Right. Well, a lot of those are actually based upon. Right, right. Cozies. And the thing is, I think whether you're into the hook of the book, whatever it is, maybe, you know, maybe you don't like sewing. Um, 
but that was the reason for that series is I took it around the, the socialization aspect of those books. The fact that they were in a sewing group. Yeah. So you didn't have to know a thing about sewing just as long as you know what it's like to have friends, you know, and that just happens to be how they know each other. And I, I think you do. I think you come away with friends from these books, you know, whether my books or another cozy author's books, I think if you find the cozies that you love, they, they become friends and you want to know from book to book, what's, what's this character doing? What are they up to? And you're sad when they, you know, they stop. Absolutely. And especially like, um, you know, I said earlier about the character driven, like so much to the point where the, the mystery I enjoy, mm -hmm. but it's secondary to me. When I go back to book after book, it's because I want to know what's going on with those characters or, right. and, and everybody in the town really, like I like when, you know, the town is its own character, so to speak, mm -hmm. you know, or everybody in the town makes up a character just to point, based upon like their involvement and, you know, right. everything. And um, I love it. Yeah. Oh. One of my friends is a reader, but she doesn't read cozies yet. <laughs> I'm trying to get her to try one. She uh, likes hearing what I'm reading. Uh, one with a really punny title. The titles Actually, are great. <laughs> they're, I, the punnier, the better. I don't know yes. if punnier is a word, but I always say it. I love them. I agree. But I'm also the person that loves Laffy Taffy jokes. So you got to, you know, take that in. I, I always think about the, the um, you know, the publishing houses, how fun it would be to be in the meeting where they discuss the titles. I'm, I'm thinking there's a lot of laughter. There's probably some wine involved. Um, I hope so. just, or chocolate in my case, and they probably just throw things out. You know, yeah. sometimes as authors, we get to, we well, I would say we always suggest the title. Sometimes they like them. Sometimes the publisher says no, and then they come up with something, so. So do you get to send in like title, um, you know, what you want. And then, yes. yes. Like a plus one for murder. I actually, that was my suggestion and I got okay. it because they thought that it was a good at, at, um, helping, um, visualize, I guess what the series was about. A perilous pal was not my idea. Um, but it's cute. I like yeah. it. Um, yeah, it's just, it's just different. Like just kind of an example. When I did the Amish series, I had, uh, um, oh, it's great too. <laughs> I think it was book five. Book five, book five. I suggested Caps and Robbers, K A P P S, like the caps. I that love the it. Wear. And they didn't, they didn't like it. They said that it would be too confusing when a, if a reader went into a bookstore and said, I want the book Caps and Robbers, that they might look up C O P S and then it would just be, be too difficult. So then they went with a churn for the worse, but we won't talk about that one. <laughs> Which is, is cute, but I mean, like, to me, like, I get what they're saying, but at the same time, like, all cozies can have those little slip-ups, yep. because they're yep. all very, very yep. much, a lot of times, a play on one word. Right, exactly. You know? And I don't know if so, it was because it was a play on the first word, I don't really know, but I I, I kind of thought that was a really clever title, but. Yeah, yeah I love it. You never That's know. another great series. <laughs> That one, I, I love that series too. I just finished it um, within this past year. It was great. Right. I see, yeah. I see yeah. one real just popped up. It just, uh, um, I think Stephanie asked if I get to say in the cover design. That's kind of interesting. We do. I get to, I get to make suggestions. So like the, the first book. Yeah. The first book actually, um, a plus one for murder. I did suggest that I wanted the open mic feel and the idea of the tables around it and it making it look like something happened on the stage. So then the artist just takes my words and makes it turn out a million times better. So yes, I, I, I would say that at least with my Berkeley books, I've been very fortunate that when I make a suggestion or two, they tend to run with it and then they just make it better than I could have imagined. Yeah, that's awesome. Um, Steph, that, oh, hi, Jillian. It's good to see you. Well, you're going to, you're really going to enjoy it. It's, it's amazing. Um, Stephanie said we could start a petition to get people to know cozies. We should start a petition. <laughs> hey, Anita. Anita has a great blog. Hearts and whodunit is the name of whodunit. Sorry, with an S. Nice. Um, she talks about um, cozies and romances. Oh, very nice. I would definitely be willing to buddy read a Paris Perilous Yay. Pal when it is released. Yeah, we'll do that. We're always buddy reading. <laughs> Be buddy reading something. Yes, 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 yes. Hey, Nicole. It's good to see you. 
Bye. Yeah, we knew what you meant. Um, yeah, characters draw us back to cozies each time. Yeah. I also love that there are so many theme cozies there. Yeah, that's another thing. There's like you mm -hmm. were talking about, whatever the hook is, there's something for everyone. And there I mean, is. everyone you can find, mm -hmm. you know, um, a topic for. I'm curious though, on, on do you find like yourself, do you ever, does a hook ever turn you off from not trying a book? If it's, um, too, if it's too narrow, you know, if it's about something that you have absolutely no interest in? I mean, I guess, like, I wouldn't necessarily read, I'm trying to think of something like, um, I wouldn't necessarily read a cozy about, I don't know, um, car racing. I'm just not, okay. a, you know what I mean? Like, but right. it would have to be like, very, very specialized niche. And I think if I tried it and like the characters, I would probably still because I'm very, Interesting. like I said, I'm very character driven. Right. But um, yeah, I don't know if it would necessarily uh, turn me off. I think the other thing is though, like for me, I'm very, I don't suspend disbelief very well. Mm -hmm. I would like to, but I don't. Right. So I'm not a big fan of like paranormals. I can handle it if it's very light. Mm hmm um, and so that's something that can be like, a, okay, I know that that's not going to, you know, if it's real out right too far past right. my comfort, you know, zone or, you know, right. But, okay. um, but in general, I don't, I don't, I don't think so. I'm willing to give everything a shot mostly. Right. Right. Well, that's <laughs> good. Months. Yeah. <laughs> Hi Lynn. She said a plus murder from, for murder, a plus <laughs> one for murder was just fantastic. Hi, Lynn. Lynn. Thank you. <laughs> It's good to see you, Lynn. Your profile pic is adorable. This is the one you um, mm -hmm. answered earlier. I haven't tried the sewing one yet, but Tiffany, I do rave about it. <laughs> it's well, a I fun series. I To this day, I love those characters. Yeah. I absolutely love those characters. They were so real, and, and um, they were just, they were one of a kind. They really were. So I really, absolutely. I love them. I miss them. I do too. My very first YouTube video is my favorite, all time favorite cozy series. And so um, oh, wow. I, I've talked about your series from then on. <laughs> so sometimes people are like, we know what she's going to say. And I'm like, I can't help you. You like what you like. <laughs> hey, Melissa B. She said, I love your Southern Sewing Circle series. And I recently checked out your new book from the library. Excellent. Thank you. I hope you enjoy it. Tell everybody about it. Yes. My um, favorite title in the Amish series is Assaulted Pretzel. Which is interesting because actually when they first gave me that title, that one bothered me a little because I didn't get it at first. I think because I don't remember what it was if I was reading it and I hadn't heard it out loud. So I'm like, Assaulted Pretzel, what are they doing to me? And then it was like later on, it was like, oh, wait, I get it. <laughs> yeah. 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 You really have to sand sometimes like the whole title together and think about right. it, which is, yep. yeah, absolutely. <laughs> well, I think like the, the dessert squad ones, the titles for that, you know, we, we did a play on, um, on like thriller novels, a Claire in present danger. Um, and I remember thinking, Oh, the poor, the poor author who was actually had since passed, um, you know, would be rolling over in his grave if he knew what we'd done to his title, but it was fun. <laughs> I that that's another really fun series if you haven't and it's got a really fun unique premise to me I wow. loved it yeah the cover artist did an amazing job they did I have the best cover artist Storm said she wishes there was more um Toby, Toby Tobias. Tobias you know what I do too I do too there was something about that series People just didn't seem to find it. And I don't know if it's because the majority of my readers have always been print readers. And that was a mostly, you know, they had a print version. Oh, yeah. It was very expensive. So I don't know if that was why people didn't seem to find that series. But yeah, I, that was a fun one to write. You know, we were talking about something yesterday that strikes me as that. I'm not saying that's what it is. But I think it's harder to, for me... Mm -hmm. to like remember or be interested in a cozy mystery series if the name is just their name if the title of the series is just their name because it doesn't tell me anything and it's hard to remember as opposed to a huh. friend for hire emergency dessert squad but when you're just like hey this is the jessica whatever yeah. 
it doesn't. That's fascinating. It doesn't like make me click with it or like seek it out because I don't remember it. You should be on some sort of a, um, like a, um, like a panel for the publishers. Cause that's actually a very interesting comment. Huh. Yeah. yeah. Um, and we were all, we were all talking about that. It's just harder to, like I said, remember, and especially remember if you don't name. know what it is. Mm -hmm. So, right. Well, so for that, anybody listening, it's a, it's a series on advertising. So it was really fun, very funny, but uh, that's yeah, awesome. that's very interesting. Interesting note. Yeah. Hi, Rose. She said, hi, I'm new here. Well, welcome. Hi, Rose. She said, I love cozies. That's so exciting. That's my favorite thing to hear. The library here tells me they fly off the shelves. I live in Ontario, Canada. That's awesome. Nice. Well, I hope you will check out all of her series, but today we're talking yes. about her brand new series and we're trying to shout it from the rooftop so she gets more. Oh, there we yeah, go. Yeah, yeah. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> so um, the Friend for Hire series so subscribe. Do you have a newsletter that people? I do. I do. If people go to my website, there's uh, places to sign up, I think on the homepage or on the contact page. And all they have to do is give their email address. And then I try once a month to send out a fun newsletter. I send out a recipe and other stuff. It's not just me. Buy your book, buy your book. I try to actually make the newsletters kind of interesting and fun. I forget yeah. sometimes that I'm, I'm supposed to be talking about a book, but it's, it's good. So sign up. <laughs> Yeah, definitely. And if you subscribe to, to my YouTube channel, I'm always following these cozy authors. So you, you'll hear when new books come out for sure. Excellent. But I do new releases each month, but I usually, there are certain authors I know because I love them so much. Right. So you'll hear about it through, through there too. Thank you. Um, it's nice to have you, Rose. Anita said, yes, I've had a theme or two that has turned me off. Okay. Mm -hmm. Somebody said, for me, it would probably be sports, uh, since I'm not a sports That'd fan, but too. it came highly recommended. I would try it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, witchy cozies can turn me off. Okay. One of my favorite cozy series I've read last year revolves around beer and brewing, and I hate beer, but it was interesting learning about it. Interesting. I think that's a fair point, too, mm -hmm. is that, um, you know, it, it's fun to learn about some of those tidbits that you don't know about. Right. There might be things within the car racing that get me hooked, not necessarily car racing, but some of the other details that go into it that I right. find fascinating or okay. the culture behind racing or something that I don't know, something like okay. that would still draw okay. me in. So if you, if let's say a car racing one was out and you didn't necessarily grab it, but if you heard from other cozy lovers that they liked it, you might give it a shot. Oh, for sure. See, that's good. That's why it's really important when you see for people, readers, when you come across a book you like, shout it out because yeah. it's you talking about it and saying why you loved it that might spur somebody else to buy it. Absolutely. Um, cause, or, sorry, Hannah says yes. Oh, I think she's talking about the sports. Gotcha. When I'm reading a new cozy series, I look forward to who will the sleuth will be in the story and how the mystery will be solved. Yeah. yeah. I think you have to really sell the sleuth for sure. Absolutely. Hey, Susan G. She said, hi, everyone. I have plus one for yeah. murder on my January TBR. <laughs> and that's I amazing. love the little, I love the little black cat. That's your pit, your image. I have a little black cat that looks just like that. Oh, <laughs> cute. Mel said, all the titles in the emergency dessert squad are fabulously punny. They are amazing. They're fun. Yeah, they're great. I will try any theme, though. Last year, I realized I'm not a huge culinary fan. Yeah. Okay. Hey, Taylin. It's good to see you. Another cute cat. Nice. Yeah. Oh. I'm happy to have you here. <laughs> um, I have Laura's new book on hold at the library. Excellent. Thank you very much. And her, her second book, Rose, comes out in July. July 5th. Yep. That's super exciting. Because we've already read the first one, and now it's like, that's one of my things. That's the only thing about cozies or but publishing in general. It's not cozies. It has just any publishing. Right. When you're reading a series is that I don't have patience. I'm working on it every year. It's one of my goals, but I never get any closer to like, yeah. but well, that's one thing when this book, when this series was picked up, I kind of begged and pleaded that the second book would come out closer rather than a year. And they did that. So this one was in December and the next one's July. Cause it is hard when you, when you find something that you like, you don't want to have to wait too long for it. So yeah. I think it helps build a series better if they're a little closer together, at least in the beginning. 
So that's an interesting point because how fast do you write them? Like, I can't imagine writing books that I can't, I don't write. So yeah. to me, it's incredible anyways, but. About three to four, about three to four months. To write an entire book. To write an entire book. But you know what? Let's, let's be real. A lot of you, you readers out there, you devoured that book that took me three or four months to read. You devoured it in a day. <laughs> That's fair. That that is so true. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's and that's true. the funny thing that. is people will be like, oh, I read it last night. I read it in a single sitting or whatever. And it's like at first it's like, wow, that's really cool. But then it's like, well, wait a minute. <laughs> and then they're like, write more. It's like, I can't yeah, exactly. I was gonna say that's that's the part that as a writer I'd be like, Ugh. because that's what I immediately think. I'm like, I just read your net. When are you? When's the next one? And they're like, um, <laughs> this one you read as an arc. It doesn't even right. come out. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yeah. That's funny. Taylin said, I just found the cozy genre this year. I love popping into these interviews. Thanks for hosting. That's awesome, Taylin. Well, if you ever need recommendations, there you go. There you go. Yeah. There you go. Um, Stephanie said, I love when recipes are included. Yeah, that's always fun. I like them too. I had those in the dessert squad, but yes. that's it. Oh, well, he's adorable. <laughs> he He's is adorable. adorable. Looking forward to reading the first and then the second. I've read Laura's other books and enjoy them. Yes, me too, Rose. Thank you. Yeah, there's your, yeah, she's guilty. Speed reader. Speed reader. <laughs> we I love you, speed that readers. Don't get me wrong. It's just... It's one of those things, like I said, it's, it's a, you feel excited that somebody loved it so much. They read it so quickly, but then it's just like, well, wait a minute. That took me three to four months of sleepless nights. <laughs> yeah. It's impressive, isn't it? So, and I know we probably talked about this the first time, but it's just making me think of it as you're talking about like how fast you write. Do you write with an outline or are you a pantser? Or my new favorite saying that I just have made up is, mm -hmm. are you a saggy pantser? Because I feel like that's like a in between. Like you kind of have an outline, right? You know, I'm gonna. So I think to go maybe I'm a saggy pantser okay. because I always I know who did it and why, and I know the the beginning and the end. Generally speaking, um, and it's the stuff in the middle. It's kind of like you know you color in the stuff in the middle however you want. Yeah, and um. I let the characters, that's a big thing for me, is I just really, as I get to know the characters, I kind of let them take take the reins. I know it sounds weird, but it's true. Um, anytime I try to force a character, and I learned that with the sewing series, that's the only time I get writer's block, is if I try to force a character to do something that, that doesn't work with who they are, and then everything comes to a screeching halt. And then when I back off and just maybe, you know, let go of the reins a little bit, then, then things move on a lot more smoothly. Well, and I can normally tell when I read something mm -hmm. if somebody is a pantser or saggy pantser because I feel like – I don't know. I just like that. Um, I think it's funny. Um, I feel like it flows more organically um, mm -hmm. to when you say you let your character, you know, go where it may. Like some of right. my favorite books of people I've interviewed have said – well, I didn't even know the character was going to do that. Yeah. <laughs> you know, yeah. I think that as a, I think we can tell that as a reader, right. That that's because it flows so well, right. I, you know, then, then if somebody who writes and that, there's nothing wrong with being very outlined right. or detailed, I've liked those books too, but I can tell, right. Um, it, I just think it flows more organically early on. Um, and early on when I was writing, I was more towards the outline. I thought I kind of needed to, but it was my second book, which was originally called Forecast of Evil, which is now called Deadly Getaway. And that's only an E at this point. Um, the main character, or I had the killer and I got 50 pages into it and it didn't work. So then I went back to the beginning of the book and I kind of started working it again. And I got about to the same place. And all of a sudden there's this boy in the snow, a teenager standing in the snow with a letter in his hand. And I had, I'm like, who is this kid and why is he in my book? And I tried to ignore him and he kept standing there with this letter and I finally wrote him into the book and it's like a subplot and it's probably my favorite part of that book. And that was just something that, that I don't know where that came from. <laughs> it's a little scary. <laughs> yeah. I love it. I love it. Um, same Hannah Mel said, it's not nice having to wait a year or longer for the next <laughs> book to come out, especially with the newer series. I get anxious to get the second book. Absolutely. So then this, this is good. So July, and then we'll see what they do to a book three and four if I get one. So, so how soon will you find out 
whether you get more and is it always, do you always find out like, how does that work? Yeah, that usually, you know, they'll, you'll, you'll get a contract. Like in this particular case, this was a two book contract. Um, and then usually about two to three months after the first book comes out, oh, okay. they'll look at sales and they will decide whether or not you're going to get more beyond that second book you're contracted for. So that's why it's so important, especially with a new series. When you come across a new series that you like, it is very important. Tell your friends about it. Encourage them to go out and get it and call, you know, contact your libraries, ask them to bring it in because they're looking at that. And they're also looking at pre-orders for the next book because that tells them, hey, people really like this series. So we'll see. Fingers crossed because Dottie and, and Big Max and Stephanie and Emma and Scout, they've got, they got, I've got a lot more stories for them. So yeah, That's the second awesome. book is fun. I can't wait for people to read that one. That's awesome. And um, do, so do publishers really like check into libraries and stuff like that too? Like, do they, do they do the, that? Well, kind it's all of part of the sales. It all comes, you know, cause the libraries have to buy the, buy the okay. book. So it all kind of comes in. What kind of demand are they getting for a book? You know, and like I said, the, that looking to see how book two is doing, because I guess they look at that as, you know, people like the first book, but if they really, you know, if they liked it enough to invest in ordering it ahead of time, then that just looks good. So we'll see how it goes. I mean, it feels like there's a louder drumbeat happening for this book. It came out in December and a lot of people are in the holiday mode, but it seems like now maybe it's starting. People are kind of circling back around and checking this book out. So keep, keep talking about it. <laughs> Yeah. Well, I was thinking because I, I had never thought about that, but you know, that's a good thing to know. Like I have like six libraries. Yeah. Um, I'm just kidding. I don't know if I'm <laughs> bugged, but I'm just kidding. I don't. Um, but I could call places and, yeah. and like request that would, that's good to know, even though I've already read it, but just to get right. it out there, I would totally yeah. do that for books. I love that's yeah. good to know. Yeah. That's important. Um, yeah, that, yeah, you know, it's funny, the, the, you know, the different roles you're in and the different perspectives from the author, they're like, I just worked, like you said, I've worked on it for so long, and then you yeah. read it, because I'm guilty of that, yeah. especially if it's a book I'm anticipating, I'll read it in hours, I mean. Oh, I do the same thing, there's a, there's an author I like, um, Linda Castillo, she writes an oh, Amish-based yeah. thriller novels, and a lot, you know, and I have it circled every July when her book comes out and I'm done with it by the end of the week that it comes out. And then it's like, now I have to wait, you know, another 11 and a half months till it comes out. But that's a good problem to have. So it as an author, problem. you love to hear that people plowed through your books. So, yeah. 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 Saggy pants I love it. Uh, oh, Ooh. she said, can you give us a hint about whether or not there will be a love triangle between Emma, Jack, and Andy? It seems like she's leaning one way, but I was just curious. Uh, no love triangle. So no, oh! <laughs> no love triangle. I was actually so surprised funny. people came away with it, but that, but I can understand it. Yes. No, there, there it will be very clear in book two who, who she is interested in. Yes. And, and one of these other ones might, might be somebody that Stephanie likes to meet. So that's all I'll say. So, oh. so we'll see. Yeah. I love that. Um, and that makes Steph me so happy. Stephanie because... needs a little help. <laughs> she does. She does. Yeah. I do feel like, you know, she, she opened herself up with throughout the book. Right. Right. Which was good to see because, yeah. you know, um, she's like, yeah, I'm pale because I don't go outside because I work, you know, and I'm like, oh, my God, I can totally figure that. That's so funny. Yeah. Um, but I, I did think that she, you know, opened herself up. I think that's awesome. And I'm so happy to hear that because I'm not a fan of love triangles. I'm oh, not sorry. either. I'm not either. So if I've ever had one in a book, I try to settle it very quickly. But yeah, no love triangle here. So well, that's awesome. Um, oh, good question. Do they look at all pre-orders or purchases the same? Like if it's a physical copy or ebook, does that matter? No, nope, they're all sales. Copy? Physical or ebook doesn't matter. They're all sales. And, and you know, pre-order sales are important no matter what. So whether you pre-order or not, it doesn't matter. It's important. So don't don't come away from this thinking that, oh, I didn't pre-order, so it doesn't matter. It does. I'm just saying that for after the first book, 
pre-ordering that second one sends a very clear message. I, you know, that, Hey, people are excited about the second one. So I think it, it's good to see it, but you know what? First week sales are important too. The thing is like in the case of this particular book, they're going to make the decision on whether there'll be a book three before book two even comes out. So what they're looking at is sales from a plus one for murder and the pre-orders that they see at that point for the, for the second book. So it's a, it's a, it's a hard market right now. You know, there's a lot of bookstores that are, you know, Barnes and Nobles doing things a little bit differently now. And it's just, it's tough. It's a tough time to be in the publishing world. Um, but hey, we're going to persevere because book readers, we make the world go round. We are nice people. Absolutely. And I think, though, <clears throat> the good thing, I mean, I think that, that, that what you're saying is obviously um, makes sense. But I think that one of the good things that has come from a little bit of the changing in the traditional publishing or with Barnes & Noble is the self-publishing has lost its stigma. Mm-hmm. Because I felt like for a long time, self-publishing had this stigma. It was because you couldn't get published, you know, or whatever, right. I'm, I, you know. Right. And I think that that stigma has been proven wrong because there are so many. With KU, I think really helped that mm -hmm. because there's so many amazing series right. that are just as good or better. And I feel like, you know, I, I don't ever want to say mean things about a book, but I feel like if we're being honest, there's duds in self or in traditional publishing the same way as, you know, the others, right, but there's the a lot of great mm -hmm. self-published yeah. books that I think did away with some of that. Right. Right. You know, which I think has made it a lot easier for people to um, do things different ways. Right. Right. Hannah said, yeah. Oh yeah. I'm excited for Stephanie having a love. Uh, yeah. 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 I think she does. I think she needs that. <laughs> She does. She does. Mel said, now that you've said there's no love triangle, it's pretty, yeah, it, it is. That's okay. <laughs> yeah. No, 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 no. I, it makes me happy because yeah. uh, I appreciate your knowledge on how to support her. Yeah, me too. Yeah, absolutely. You know, and, and, and the big thing is talking it up. Word of mouth sells books better than anything else, in my opinion, because I'll take the, the word of a friend who I know, you know, talks up a book a whole bunch it's contagious and that yeah. that sells books better than ads been listening to you on the on the southern sewing circle makes me want to go back and read them all again myself so you know it, it's that's the best way to help and reviews and shouting it out and yeah invaluable absolutely absolutely storm said oh storm yes she said oh thank goodness i i cannot do love triangles <laughs> me neither yeah. i you know af if if they don't pick if it doesn't resolve itself, like you were saying quickly, I just get to the point where I'm like, I don't, I don't care. Pick both, pick none, but right. I, I didn't, I don't care. Just, I right. can't, you know, yeah. I, I stop brooding for them in any right. sort of fashion. And they're supposed to be mystery novels. So you don't want to, you know, walk that too long. So, yeah. Yeah. What was the name of the Amish series you mentioned? I have, it's called the, it's called an Amish mystery. So the first book, just the first book, so you know you find the right series, is Hearse and Buggy. And then there's Assaulted Pretzel, Shunned and Dangerous, Suspended Sentence, <laughs> A Churn <laughs> for the title. Worse, Just Plain Murder, and uh, A Killer Carol. There we go. That how do yes. you stump an how do you stump an author with a lot of books? Ask them to to name all of them. It's a little a little. Um, that was amazing. <laughs> um, and Taylin, you may already know this. I don't know how much you keep up on on like BookTube, YouTube sort of thing. But in April, there is um, a couple of big YouTubers that host an event called Amish in April. So the whole month for April, we read all Amish books. Not all, but we tried to read, mm -hmm. and they're different prompts and stuff, and. So some of those series get, uh, that gets a lot of, and I'm going to, this year, I'm going to do a big like spotlight of different cozies that are Amish setting right before April for right. people to have some stuff to read. So nice. it's super exciting. Nice. Hey, Lisa. Hi, it's Lisa. Good to see you. I adore so Lisa. I've gotten to meet Lisa in person at one of my events, I don't know, a couple, four, five, gosh, time is moving so fast. It, it seems like it was yesterday. It was probably really like four years ago, but she's lovely. Love you, Lisa. <laughs> yes. Um, 
if you and you guys probably already know because if you like cozies i'm sure you do but lisa k has um a lisa k's book reviews it's a blog and it is amazing she yes. reads a ton of cozies and she is always doing different things on there and she does like a food Friday and does recipes and all sorts of different things and has a lot of authors. It's so much fun. And, um, you make sure that you, you like, and subscribe. It's awesome. Nice. Mel said that's good too, because Stephanie needs, she does need a great guy. Great. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Taylin. I'm planning on reading her buggy for Amish in April. Excellent. Awesome. Yay. That was a fun series. I love that one. So but yeah, I'm just thinking, you know, in terms of people that are listening, in terms of my series, my very first series was the Jenkins and Burns Mysteries. Then I did the Southern Sewing Circle under the pen name Elizabeth Lynn Casey. I did the Amish Mysteries, the Toby Tobias Mysteries, which was advertising, the Emergency Dessert Squad Mysteries, and now A Friend for Hire. So A Friend for Hire, A Plus One for Murder is my 37th book. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. Isn't that, that's it's incredible. And when was your first one published? What year? Do you remember? 2005. So you've had 37 books published since 2005? Yes. Yes. Wow. That's yeah. A- there was a few years there where I was writing like four and five books a year. I don't do that anymore. I don't. <laughs> yeah. I that's a little incredible. too old for that. <laughs> yeah. yeah that's- I, had some, wow. I had some romances in there and some women's fiction in there too. So I kind of. Wherever I get an idea, I write it. The um, you were just talking about the first series you wrote, the Burn series. What's Jenkins it called? Jenkins and Burns. Mm-hmm. Um, it's coming. It's going to be. I'm going to be talking about it in my one of my videos that comes out this week. I've really? never read any of them, but I do a series. So we have a um, subscription to a snacks box called USA Snacks. Okay, and they send you snacks from a different state each month. And they're always like small companies within that state. And they right. get stories, okay. whatever state comes. I also do cozies from that state at the end of the video. Oh, fun. And so this month, this, the one that's coming out is from New Jersey. So New Jersey. that All was, right. um, that yeah. was in there. I didn't even realize that. And I was like, how did I not realize this series? And so, um, <laughs> that was where I, it all started. <laughs> yeah. So it's going to be in one of my videos this week. It's in- so interesting how that works, isn't it? Small world. Yes. Um, I did not know that. But yeah, loves Amish stories. So I'm looking, yes, yes, yes. Well, I'm going to do a spotlight of that, but there are a ton, a ton of Amish cozies, actually, quite a few. There's some good ones, too. Yeah. And her series is, it's you're going to like it. Yeah. Oh, thanks. That's sweet. Oh. I think she's talking about how many books you've written. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Cause that would be what the wow is for. <laughs> I know 37 bucks. And see that that's crazy. And that's There's full length. Question. I have, I have more like novella length ones, which probably puts me over into the mid forties, but this is just full length books. Um, do I read any cozy series by other authors? I pr- Generally speaking, I prefer not to read cozies because I just kind of want to do my own thing. Um, I tend to read more women's fiction and suspense novels, um, but I like Lynn Cahoon. She's also yeah. one of my best friends, so I'll give her a shout out. Yes. So, yeah. Yeah. And then I just tend to, yeah, I tend to stay away from the genre, not because I don't enjoy it, but just because I've written so many in that, that I just, I, I think I kind of need a little bit of a, a break and I don't want to accidentally pull anybody else's stuff in. So I just kind of av- avoid it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I love Lynn Cahoon and it was so funny. I interviewed her and it was after I moved here to Florida and her and I lived in the same town for years and it's not that big of a, it's not that big of a town. Wow. I mean, um, in Illinois. Um, and I mean, it's yeah. 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 It's not that big of a place. And isn't it funny? And then it took me when I moved here and I did the interview, I was like, are you kidding? And like, I was in, I was in out in St. Charles for 17 years. Okay. Yeah. yeah. That's how yeah, I got to my, know her. So yeah. Yeah. That's amazing. Yeah. Oh, St. Charles is a cool area. Yeah. Uh, Storm said, I love Amish mystery going to finish it in Amish in April. Currently on a turn for the, for worse. the worst. Yay. <laughs> <laughs> 
I like uh, that was one of my favorites. So, yeah. Oh, you know what? It's interesting. There's not, you know, there's certain states that are saturated. Right. And there's certain states that have a wide open playing field. Um, Because there's really not that many set in New Jersey. But yeah, right. I can, there's definitely not any that I can think of set in Delaware. Yeah. Well, they should. There's some good beach stuff there in Delaware. So, yeah. Yeah. I think we, I think we should start. We should start a, hey, a chant. We want some cozy set in Delaware. <laughs> We do. I, I, yeah, I like cozy setting. I don't, I mean, there are certain settings that like I love, but I think right. that anywhere new is really interesting too. Yeah. It's just a, you know, different place. Right. Yes. I love her Got too. Some love for Lynn coming up. That's good. <laughs> yeah. I liked, I like her kitchen witch series and I, and I really love her tours trap and, um, Oh, the farm to fork is on my, so there's a ch uh, reading challenge that a booktuber does. Um, Lizzie Fela's books, her name's Elizabeth. She does this mm -hmm. challenge called serious about series. Okay. And you, so like last year you, you made a list of 21 series that you wanted to like work on, catch up right. on all those things. And this year, one of my series is the tourist trip. Okay. I'm already caught up on all yours. So now I'm just like, give me That's more. right. Give <laughs> July, July 5th. <laughs> it is a great title. It is. A, that was a fun one. Like I said, that was the one I wanted to be Caps and Robbers, but I've, I've come <laughs> around to liking A Churn for the Worst. So I love the cover yeah. on that one with the horse and everything. So. Yes, we are chanting it. That'd be amazing. <laughs> yeah, we do. We do need it. It's wide open for any authors that are trying to like yeah. come up with a cozy and something different. Yeah. Maybe the setting. Yeah. 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 She is. She was so nice. I just, yeah. Can't believe I missed her. That's craziness. <laughs> craziness. So um, you have that coming out in the, the peril pal. A the pal? Perilous Pal. Perilous. A, per uh, a Perilous Pal. I'm sorry. Yep. A, yeah, perilous, a pal. perilous Pal. A Perilous Pal. Yes. July Which 5th. Which is a cute title. And then we'll see. I've got to I've got to pitch the ideas for three and four and potentially five, and we'll see what happens. Um, I have this proposal sitting on the desk with my editor for mm, a character for the Sewing Circle, uh, but we'll see if they take it or not. If they do not take it, then we'll see what I do. I may not be able to have it be those characters, but I may proceed ahead with the I, the overall idea on my own. We'll see. Ooh. Yeah, we'll see. Because That's super exciting. It's a strong idea. So if they don't take it, then I might just do it myself. So. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Let me know if you do, because I believe me, I talk it up enough as it is. I will definitely talk up new stuff. <laughs> Yeah. So when you say pitch an idea, mm -hmm. do you have to pitch like the actual synopsis of books like three, four and five? So like book five, when you've only written book two? Well, now we do it. I used to earlier wow. on in the heyday, like when, you know, there were more bookstores around, etc. cetera. Um, I would just, you know, you pitch the idea for the first book and maybe you give them a, like a blurb, like a paragraph or two for the book two and three. And then after that, they would just renew me. I didn't have to show them anything, any ideas. Things are a little bit different overall now in the publishing. Um, so I kind of give them an idea. Like I can give them like a paragraph. Here's, you know, um, just a little blurb, a little tease, I guess, of what a three and a four and a five might be. And then, you know, that they'll look at that, but really what they're looking at is sales first and foremost, because they know I can write. I've proven that to them. They know I can come up with stories. Really all they, the main thing is how's this series doing? So that's the biggie. Yeah. Okay. I think that would be really hard because you're talking like, you know, like you said, a few years in between each book and it takes maybe from, I don't know. That seems like, okay, well, six years from now, mm -hmm. Emma's going to be, I don't know, that seems crazy. Well, it's not, I mean, that is, it's not, it's, you just kind of come up with ideas like, um, 
Mm. Like, let's just say this first book had been book three. Maybe I would have pitched it as, um, uh, you know, there's a, um, see, I'm drawing a blank now. You, you just kind of give that the outer, like the outline, oh, um, okay. but down, down to like a paragraph and, okay. that, and that's about it. And they'll be like, oh, that sounds neat. But that's just, they just want to know that you have an idea. I guess I'm sure sometimes publishers have gotten stuck with people who have, you know, said they have an idea and then, you know, comes to the drawing board and they don't, you know, and they, mm -hmm. they need to know these books are coming. But I've never had a problem with that. My brain is a, an active, you know, <laughs> characters are doing their own thing in there all the time. So <laughs> interest. Yeah. Do you have, well, now I don't think it has, I don't think it probably happens as much anymore, but I just picture authors like having notes everywhere in their house because they like think of an idea randomly or they're out at the restaurant all of a sudden they're like, and you got like 80 scrapbook, but I've, or pieces of scratch paper. But now I think with phones, I don't, you know, probably doesn't happen anymore. Well, I don't, you know, I used to not, I'd come up with an idea and I would never write it down because I kind of thought if it was a good enough idea, I'd remember it. But now that I'm, you know, pushing 54 as of tomorrow, um, I'm not remembering things quite as much or I'll, you know, I'll think I'm going to, and then I don't. So now I might jot it down, but really it's, what I get is just the idea, like this friend for hire. It wasn't like all of a sudden I see a murder happening. It's just, I saw an idea. Here's this woman who wants to, you know, this, she's going to do this as her job and she's going to essentially be a paid companion. Um, mm -hmm. And then the characters start, then I start creating the side characters in my head and then I get to the murder or the mystery or whatever, because that's, I'm the same way with, to me, they have to be characters. You have to care about the characters. So I want to make sure I have the world first mm -hmm. and then I can figure out how, how am I going to make a mystery? What can happen here with them? So. Yeah. Well, happy birthday. Thank you. That's awesome. <laughs> yeah. Um, Lisa said, hugs to you both have to jump off. Gotcha. Gotcha. Take care. Thanks for coming in. That was awesome. Jean said, hi, ladies. I love all of Laura's books. Can't hi, wait Jean. for the next one. <laughs> That's amazing, Jean. Thanks for coming. Um, if you've ever written, if you ever write another Amish series book, you can tell the publisher that your readers will appreciate the title Caps and Robbers. <laughs> we get it. That's right. It's like my readers get it. <laughs> They're smarter than you realize. So, yeah. For no, sure. I, I think it was a marketing thing. I think they were just afraid that people wouldn't find the book. So they, they as a publishers, they have to think about, they have to think about sales because that's what's most important to them and how are people going to find this book. So it's okay. There's been a few times they've, they've come up with titles that I haven't liked. And then a few times they've liked ones that I have. And sometimes they suggest ones that are even better. So yeah. They know what they're doing most of the time, <laughs> especially the artist department. I just, my cover artist are, is, she is amazing. I actually requested the lady that's working on a plus one for murder is the same woman who did my sewing circle books mm -hmm. and my Amish books. So I requested, in addition to requesting a quick turnaround with book two, I requested to get her and I got her. So. Oh, that's awesome. A lot of people with birthday wishes, Anita, Thank you. Bev, Thank you. Hannah, Rose says happy birthday. Thank you. Slightly early. Yeah, Mel. Thank you. Storm says happy birthday, Stephanie. Um, well, I I'm I can't wait for the second one. Yeah. And I will make sure that we um do some of those things that we talked about. And I'm always talking about it on my channel. So um make sure that you Shout out her books. Make sure you subscribe to her channel or not her channel. Sorry, her um, newsletter. Mm -hmm. And um, if you're here, subscribe to my channel because you'll always hear new books that are coming out. And you never know when I'll have Laura back because I would love to have you back. Mm -hmm. hint, just and I would love to come back anytime. You always have such nice people on your on your, on your thing. So, but yeah, and I've got my website, lauraBradford.com. You can see all of my books. So it's all there. I'll be able to add the description, uh, put your website in the description an hour after it um, like okay. loads up the actual okay. recording. Okay. So that oh, when people watch the recording later, right. um, I can put it in, but okay. you have to wait for. Actually, another thought real quick, you know, people want to know how they can help authors when they like a book. Yeah. If you're on Instagram, if you're on Facebook, 
post a picture of the book, say what you thought of the book, tag the author, because then that enables us to share it. Or on Instagram, we can share it as part of our story if, if we're able to. And uh, that just gives us some another way to kind of put the book out there. So all of those things help. Yeah. Awesome. I love all the tips because as a reader who constantly is disappointed if books don't get more, right. I will totally do those things. Yep. <laughs> so, oh, but this is great. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, it was so much fun. Thank you for joining me today. Happy birthday. Congrats Thank on you. getting finally getting into the house. I totally relate. Yeah. <laughs> That's super exciting. Yeah. Um, yeah, more people saying happy birthday. Yeah, my oh, pleasure. And I'm, I'm over on Facebook. I have a Laura Bradford author and I'm always on there showing people pictures of my new house. And yeah, I talk about all sorts of stuff, not just books. So yeah. Yeah, it was a wonderful chat. Yeah, make sure you go <clears throat> like her on Facebook too. This has been a fun session. Laura was a lot of fun to meet. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> oh, thanks, Kay. All right, guys, have a great day and we'll see you again. Thanks, Laura. And Bye. I'll email you. Um, maybe you can come back around June or so right before the new book comes that out. That would be great. All okay. Right. I'll hold Sounds you to good. it. Thank you. All right. Bye, Bye everyone. Bye.